Crimson Trace announces LaserGuard Pro for today's most popular concealed carry firearms, combining a red or green laser sight with 150 lumen light, taking personal defense to the next level. Available now at your local dealer. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, now available on iTunes and other podcast clients and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android. Feel free to call Tom now at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN or 866-825-5486 or email Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, once again, here's Tom. Well, welcome back to Gun Talk. I had an interesting thing happen this week. It was in uh, Sam's Club. I saw this uh, gentleman, I say older gentleman, he's older than me, and I mean, I immediately, I guess I'm just attuned to it, immediately spotted that he was open carrying. At first I thought it was some kind of a taser, but it was the, sh- the shape of the holster. Cross draw with a revolver, okay? But what was interesting about it for me was my reaction to it. I was, as always... And normally I tell people, don't tell people that you carry, but obviously I do, uh, concealed. But what I did was I just simply made note of what he looked like and where he was. And as much as possible, I made it a point to know where he was the whole time I was there. Why is that? Was it because I thought he was a bad guy? Nope. Nope. But I knew that should something happen, he would be an element, something to think about. Excuse me while I drink some water here. We're working on a uh, little cold here. Get that cough down. So I'm, I'm walking around, and I'm just making sure I know where he is as much as I can. And I found myself thinking about my reaction to that. I'm also wondering, would not someone who had ill intent planned also make note of the open carry guy and make sure to know where he was. Now, what what that means, I don't know. I hear people say, well, yeah, that's the shoot me first guy. I, I don't know. Maybe, yes, I don't know. I don't have any information on that. I just, and I don't, I don't really have a therefore on this one. I just found it interesting as I was thinking about my reaction to that to look at it, and I don't actually know what it means. Have you, when you're going about your daily business, come across somebody open carrying? And if you have, what was your reaction? What did you think? Did you say or do anything, or did did it change the way you behave at all? Just curious, just kind of a point of conversation here. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN, or just dial Tom talk gun line three justin is with us out of vancouver washington justin what's on your mind here hey uh i wonder what your thoughts were on the uh 223 wild for the ar platform for what just in general if uh 223 wild the good chambering or not yeah it is um it is just a, and you know the drill, it's just a, an ever so slightly different chambering. As I remember, uh, it allows you to shoot the uh, 5.56 and 223 in the same chamber. Is that basically what you have there? That's what I was told, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's fine. I, I don't know. Are you concerned with any particular issue with it? No, I was just wondering how it would uh, work accuracy-wise, if it was more accurate than a uh... 223 or 556 barrel? Uh, I don't know that it is. I think probably you're going to have other factors that are going to be affecting accuracy more than that. I wouldn't worry about mm-hmm. it. So, um, but yeah, I, I think particularly if you might be using 556 and 223 ammo, uh, of course, if you get something chambered for 556, you can shoot both in it. If it's chambered mm-hmm. for 223, supposedly you shouldn't shoot 556 in it, although. Everybody I know does. So there you go. But, you know, you pay your money and you, you make a choice. I, I, I wish you luck with it. Thank you, Justin. Dave is uh, on one out of K- uh, Kentucky. Hey, Dave. Hey, Tom. 
Hey, I just wanted to call because I heard you talking just a few minutes ago to a gentleman about Congressman Thomas Massey and Ooh, some right. of the misinformation he has been spreading about H.R. 38. And he's a, I live he's in, in your area. The, isn't he? he's, a, he's a Kentucky guy. He's my congressman. He's my congressman. Oh. And, and as such, I have engaged with his office on this way before Fix Nix was a part of it. And what people should understand is that he has never supported H.R. 38 and national reciprocity on its own. He didn't co so he didn't okay, so what the he's bill doing, originally and right it's it's really I think some political smoke and mirrors on his part to cover the fact that he was never a supporter in the first place because I think he knows that would be an unpopular position with his constituents if you were so to come out and say that. Okay. He's trying to kill national reciprocity by fooling people or basically lying to people and saying, Well, this fix Nix bill right. they've attached to it is an Obama creation, and it's from the devil, and it will make all your guns instantly evaporate. And uh, so he's just basically lying about it, is what you're saying. It's it, it's a lot of scaremongering, because uh, when I discovered months ago, before Fix Nix was ever combined, uh, that he was not a co-sponsor of H.R. 38, I, obviously being one of his uh, constituents, I called his office to find out mm -hmm. and spoke to his staff on several different occasions. We had some actual lengthy conversations about it. And the bottom line was that he was not going to budge. He was not going to co-sponsor it because he did not support national reciprocity. Interesting. Okay, so and he's the guy that a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Congressman Massey is saying that the fix nicks, and there's this whole list of things he said about it. And you look at him, you go, where in the world did you get that? This is from the Obama administration. This would, uh, you know, would end up uh, banning right. a lot of people from owning guns. You're going, no, no one who's not currently prohibited would be prohibited after the fact. Uh, all it right. does is and tells the, the agencies. Not that long. I read it myself, and, and, and you're absolutely right. It only enforces current law. It doesn't change anything. Wait, wait, wait. You, you did what? You, you, you actually read, the, read bill the bill yourself? I, I didn't think we are allowed to but, do that. But it's... <laughs> It's not that long. It's not no, that it's long. No, it's not. Yeah, it's, and, it's a uh, great point you make. You know, why don't we read it for ourselves instead of listening to these blowhards like this? Right, and yeah, I just find it very disingenuous on a congressman's part to act as if this is the reason that he opposes national reciprocity in H.R. 38, because that's not it at all. This is simply a way for him to preserve his uh, uh, pro-Second Amendment creds, as it were, without actually, without actually telling being, the truth about yeah. what his position is. Right. So he could he, he could preserve he, pro Second Amendment credibility w while actually being anti Second Amendment. Right. He's he's out there. <laughs> a lot of people, and, and part of the reason I called is I see so many people on Facebook and other internet forums trumpeting him as this champion of the Second Amendment and being this mm -hmm. Paul Revere that made us all aware of this this horrible thing that's going to happen when they don't know that he opposed it from the start before Fix Nix was ever combined. Well, that is fascinating and very helpful, Dave. I really appreciate you taking time to call in. I think we just got the truth about uh, Congressman Massey. Wow. So much for the whole fix Nix is an Obama creation, et cetera, et cetera. No, it's actually a, it's a nothing burger. You might actually want to do what Dave did. You actually can go read the bill and make up your own mind. Tell you what, when we come back, we're going to talk about high school students shooting in a league in California. Our number 866-TALK-GUN. Double Tap Ammunition and Colt Ammunition manufactured by Double Tap. Using top-of-the-line components made in the USA and hand-inspected. Choose from 481 loads in 82 calibers. Defense, hunting, competition. Double Tap. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. 
Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsman.org. That's ussportsman.org. Face it, sometimes more is better. That's the idea behind the double-stack, full-capacity pistols from Springfield Armory. From the groundbreaking XD to the ergonomic XDM to the latest refinements in the XD Mod 2 series, you can get subcompact, midsize, and full-size pistols in 9, 40, and 45. Carry, target, or tactical models. Fast, accurate, dependable. Don't come up short when it matters. Go full cap. Go Springfield Armory. Springfield-Armory.com. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Delio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Delio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Delio. Made in America. Gluten-free. At the App Store and Google Play or GunDealio.com. Cold defense ammunition manufactured by Double Tap. Real defense ammo designed with maximum effectiveness in mind. Have confidence in the performance of your defensive ammunition with Cold Defense by Double Tap. Available at your local retailer today. Uh, yeah, you've heard, you see the stories, you know, kids, guns, schools, all a bad combination. Well, except for <laughs> when they're good kids and they're shooting in competition. And sometimes, sometimes you'll have schools get involved with it. Joining me right now to talk about that is Rich Elliott, uh, Trap and Skeet Team Assistant Coach at Calvary Chapel, Chapel High School in California. Rich, welcome to Gun Talk. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. You bet. So explain, uh, I take it Calvary Chapel High School is a private school? Yes, it is. Okay, so how does it have a trap and skeet team? Well, um, I got an email from a buddy of mine. I do a uh, range safety officer at Camp Pendleton on a volunteer basis, and he told me about this, uh, what was called California High School uh, Clay Target League. Mm. So I looked him up and watched a couple of the videos on their introductory page. I sent an email to a colleague of mine who's on staff. This is a, where my daughter goes to, or goes to high school. She graduated last year. Mm-hmm. And I just said, hey, what, what are your thoughts? And he replied, in about a minute, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> so uh, we, we went through all of the, the hoops we had to jump through, which was, which was pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Um, the league was started in 2001 out of Minnesota. And currently there's uh, approximately 600 teams nationwide in about 20 states. Um, There's about uh, 20,000 student athletes participating, and there's been over 30 million rounds fired and not one safety incident to date. I'm looking at the... So uh, as far as... No, go ahead. As far as any high school sport is concerned, it is the safest sport bar none. Yeah, you sure can't say the no injuries about football or, or pretty much any other sport. It, even badminton, somebody's going to sprain a wrist or an ankle, and, you know. <laughs> and, and and if you want to go the, if you want to lean really hard to the left and and embrace the Title IX ridiculousness, mm-hmm. this is probably the most Title IX sport there is, because gender doesn't matter. It's it's all about the performance that the that the student athlete can perform. And we, we don't care what your gender is. You do the, can boy, be, do the you boys can, and the girls? You can have one eye in a wheelchair and you're good to go. Do the boys and the girls shoot head to head? Yes, they do. That's great. Because there shouldn't be any uh, differentiation. I mean, all you're doing is trying to hold up a gun and break targets. That is that is it, exactly. Hmm. Whereas, whereas pretty much every other sport, um, 
you know, there is going to be a disparity between uh, males and females. And uh, my, my son, who went to the same high school, graduated a few years earlier than my daughter, mm-hmm. had a situation like this. He was on the football team, and he's on the wrestling team. And in one of his matches, he was forced to uh, wrestle against a female. And he came to me, and he's like, Dad, I don't want to wrestle with a girl. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, you can either forfeit or you can just, you know, she signed up for this, so just she's just another competitor. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, well, all right, then I'll do it. But initially, he didn't want to. Right. Um, so there is, you know, it, it, there's some weirdness there, and that there is a strength hmm. issue uh, that goes with that. But in uh, in tar- target shooting, there isn't. Right. I'm looking at the website, usaclaytarget.com has the information there. So now tell me, how's the program going? Because a lot of people are going to say, California, that's odd uh, that this thing would be going there. Uh, is it in the public schools as well? Yes, it is. Um, I, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not in front of my computer right now to give you the, the actual breakdown of the number, but um, I'm sure that we could get those for you as far as the number of private schools versus public schools. Mm-hmm. Um but I do know last year was the first year for the state of California to enter. And um, although you'll see on the, the web page where it keeps saying, you know, California high school clay target league or Minnesota high school, it's kind of a misnomer because we actually go all the way down to sixth grade. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. And I did get some numbers from one of the, the head uh, instructional coaches from the league the other day. And he told me it's about, 30 percent um 30 35 percent high school students uh about uh 30 percent junior high school students uh and in some schools districts in different states uh sixth grade is still relegated as elementary school and Mm. our school is that way but next year we will be changing so now six six through eight will be junior high school so um i want to just make that mention to encourage um the listeners that may be interested in doing this um, and it, it's available. In, I'm, program. I'm looking. It's available in a lot of different states, and probably in the states where it's not available, all it needs is somebody to say, "Hey, let's do that here," and then get cracking. That's that's probably the majority of the reason I'm calling you is to get more dads, more grandpas that are shooters. It's like, hey, let's let's get let's start a team at our school. Let's at least get this um, this conversation going. And there's one um, the. the the league can be treated as a club sport, or they can go full varsity if they wish. There's more hoops to jump through at the school. There's more cost to the mm-hmm. student if you're going to treat it as a varsity sport. Okay. But I think the majority of them treat it as a club sport. And the other aspect about this is that the league has a reciprocity agreement. Um, so if, um, say, say my school is school A, and we mm-hmm. have a team, and the other high school down the street from me, who I've spoken to the AD, um, and they're not interested in starting the, the, a team at, at their school, mm-hmm. um, if, if he's got two or three kids that want to join, they can join our team. All they need is the verbal permission from the school to do that. Oh, that's nice. So, now, I, I'm going so I'm to I'm go back on one thing there. When you're talking about uh, dads and granddads getting involved in coaching, I would also offer moms and grandmothers uh, can also exactly. be involved in this and coach it because there's an awful oh. lot of women competitors out there. And you know, here's the other thing. Let me ask you, would you have to have a background in competitive shooting to be a coach in this? I'll give you our numbers as an example. We have a pretty small student body at, at Calvary High School, only about 450 kids. Mm-hmm. When we made morning announcements and saying who would be interested in a trap and skeet team come to Coach G's office during lunchtime, we had 53 kids show up. Oh, wow, more than 10%. So, yes, more than 10%. And um, I've, I've heard that story from a lot of uh, other schools as I've been doing more research into the numbers that we've got. And um, there, um, where is I going with this? It's, it, well, it's um, a terrific the, you know, the, the thing I was going to throw in here is I love the idea of girls being able to compete head-to-head there's no special dispensation, anything else. You've got a shotgun. You go break targets. And I have shot against some women. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I have. I didn't really offer any competition. I have shot with women who just clean my clock. Uh, oh, so. yeah. <laughs> well, on, on, on a, my, my day job is a surgical nurse. Mm-hmm. So from a physiological standpoint um, and also doing RSO down at Camp Pendleton where we're doing long-range shooting, you know, 1,000 right. yards, 
Mm-hmm. Um, women have better fine motor skills than men do. So mm. they actually have an advantage o- over the muscularity that men usually have in sports. Um, yeah, so where we were going with your numbers mm-hmm. is um, the um, the females that are involved, that, no problem standing right next to the guys and going in. When we took our numbers of 53, mm-hmm. I took a poll. It's like, well, how many have shot a shotgun before? Five kids had, out of 53 had shot a shotgun, but they all wanted to be on the team. Okay, and I'm, su- I'm surprised five, at that. that. That's very <laughs> interesting. And three of the five had actually shot trap before. And the way the league runs is if it's the inaugural year for the state, which it was for us last year, mm-hmm. then they, they, they want you to be relegated to only shooting trap. Okay. Uh, after the first year, then they open it up to trap and skeet, and then they just keep it at that because sporting plays wouldn't be an option because it's it's not possible to do. Because what happens is we had two teams in the state last year. We were in Southern California, and our competing team was all the way in Sacramento. Oh, yeah. We've never seen them. We've never met them because it's a virtual league. We go to the range on our schedule. Oh. Uh, it didn't have to. It didn't have to compete with other sports because I had mm-hmm. kids on the team that were already involved in other sports. And once we worked out our own schedule so that everybody was happy, we went to the range on our day. We showed our rounds. We put the scores in the computer, and then they go to the league headquarters, and everything gets posted. That you know, it's brilliant. I just I realized as you were saying that, of course, because you're not. It's not like basketball or football where you're going against somebody. You go and shoot your match. You shoot you know, your rounds of trap or skeet, post your scores. They can do that in Sacramento. They could do that in New York or wherever. You post them and you figure out who has the highest score. Rich, I, I've got to scoot here, but uh, I guess we'll give out the website again. That's the uh, USAClayTarget.com? Yes, that is it. Okay, and if you're interested in getting involved uh, on an adult basis or if you've got kids that are interested in this, take a look. I congratulate you on what you've been doing there. That is a wonderful idea, and the idea of getting all those kids to show up, and hardly any of them have uh, shot before. That is just amazing. Rich, thank you so much. That is grand. People say, well, what can I do to help the Second Amendment? There you go, right there. You can be a coach. You can get a program like this started. Go to USA Clay Target. Dot com. You can find a state where it's active, and if they don't have something like that going in your state, well, you could be the one, you and your spouse, you and your husband, you and your wife. Why not? 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Would you ever consider doing that? Give me a holler. Let me know. Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Washington Times Opinion Page regular contributor Tom Gresham. All right, here's another DGU. That's defensive gun use. There are... Well, there are DGUs every hour of the day. Actually, many, many times in every hour of the day. In the United States, people use guns to stop crime and protect themselves hundreds of thousands, if not millions of times every year. Most of them don't get reported because in most of the cases, nobody fires a shot. But here's one where it was reported because, well, the shots were fired. 52-year-old Dawson County Georgia Sheriff's Deputy Sergeant Randall Harkness gave a homeless man a courtesy ride to a, that's in uh, Alabama, I believe it was, uh, or Georgia, correction, Georgia, to a Dawsonville gas station to help him out with money. So the Sheriff's Deputy gives this homeless man a ride to a gas station. It's going to help him out. It's going to give him some money. I mean, you may not realize this. Cops actually reach into their own pockets to help people out now and then. Upon arrival, Harkness began to give the man some money when the man began to physically assault the deputy. Who knows? Drugs? uh, Mentally insufficient? Deficient? I don't know. Um, A female bystander, a female bystander in a car, witnessed the assault, got out of her car, and fired her gun at the homeless man two or three times, striking him at least once and causing him to cease the assault and run away. 
simple. Good guy with a gun, in this case a good gal with a gun, stops an assault on a police officer. Here's a stat for you. When private citizens intervene, the average body count in active shooter events is 2.3 victims. When the police intervene, the average body count is 14.29 victims. Well, that makes no sense. Why would that be? Well, because the police have to get a report and have to come there. While they are in transit, people are being shot. When the private citizen intervenes, he or she is on site and can react more quickly, thus saving more lives. Yeah. Uh, Line three, Dave's with us out of St. George, Utah, on open carry. Dave, what's your take? Uh, Just a quick thought that uh, a few years ago, before I retired from law enforcement, I was in a large store, and there was a gentleman walking around, and and people were drawn to him, and I finally noticed the guy was was open carrying. And uh, I had no heartburn about it, but the people around were having... uh, both sides of it, some were upset, others were not. And I just happened to end up behind him in the checkout line, and I mm-hmm. just asked him, I said, excuse me, sir, uh, how do you like being a, a bullet magnet? And he looked at me, and he started to bristle. I, he says, "It's you mean you, my, my, my handgun? I said, yeah. He says, it's my right. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not challenging that. I said, mm-hmm. I'm also armed, but tactically, if I were a bad guy and see you walking around, you'd be number one to go down. And even more important, I think, is it may have a negative effect on the other people who don't like or understand the the uh, open carry and or Second Amendment. And I think it's it's uh, somewhat of a hindrance. And that's all I, you know, I just want to make my point. So actually you're making two points. One is that when you're open carrying, people know that you are the guy with the gun. So they will react. Some bad guys could react by targeting you first. But the other is just from a pure public relations standpoint, uh, I've heard people say, well, this is how we normalize uh, carry a gun. I go, well, I get that. I understand what you're saying. At the same time, I don't think it wins hearts and minds when you scare people. Uh, very true. Very true, sir. All right, Dave. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, your service in law enforcement. Thank you, sir. Bob's on one out of Bishop G.A. Hey, Bob, you're on Gun Talk. Hey, Tom. Yes, sir. I bought a uh, used Savage Model 12 varmint rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor. Mm-hmm. And I borrowed somebody's uh, 42 power night for a scope and shot a point. Eight inch five shot group at six hundred yards. Good grief! I did not win the match because the wind took took my bullets away. You know, on the yeah. next uh, few few rounds, but right. uh, I couldn't believe how accurate that was. So you would be shooting if you're shooting a point eight inch group at six hundred yards. That would be slightly over a tenth of an inch, one tenth of an MOA at 100 yards or, or one-tenth of an MOA out where you are. That's fascinating. That is, d- did you know it was shooting that well while you were shooting? No, I, I couldn't see my bullet strikes with that power scope. Mm-hmm. But uh, we sighted in on a steel plate and then went to the target. Mm-hmm. And I just fired my five shots, and the guy went down there in a motor scooter and brought the targets back and... That's what it was, and I couldn't believe it. So so you immediately got rid of that terrible rifle, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and here's the great part about it is, it's a Savage, right? I paid 700 bucks for this that, used yes, that's Savage where, rifle. That, that's where I was going, is it? You know, that would have been a $4,000 rifle 10 years ago to do that, and now you can do it with a $700 rifle. It's just nuts. Well, see, now I have to buy that that scope well that's going to cost you three times what the rifle cost i know i know <laughs> i know i got a piggy bank <laughs> that is great i love that range board that is terrific uh man a 0.8 inch group uh five shot group at 600 yards that's impressive uh what's there's a thought what's the best group you ever shot what were you shooting what was the distance 
Uh, do you ever? And I mean, it could be for all. It could be a two shot group. I was with Rob Latham one time when he got um, what do you call it? A true double. We were shooting. Actually, got on TV, shooting video with him, and he shot at the target. Then he shot again, and he, he was supposed to keep shooting, and he just stopped after the, sec- the second shot. I went, what, what happened? What? I mean, you know, Rob's one of the best shooters in the world, shooting a handgun, and he stopped. He says, "Tom," he says, "I think I got a true double." I said, what are you talking about? And he walked up to the target, and there's one bullet hole there. And I mean one, not slightly enlarged. I mean, I mean, absolutely the second round went right through the first. He said, that is, he says, that kind of thing will actually cost you and make you lose a match. I said, what do you mean? He said, there's no way for a scorer to look at that and say it's two bullet holes that you fired twice. He would call that a hit and a total miss all the way off the cardboard, all the way off the target. He said, holy cow. I mean, he took the target. He you know, he, said, he says, I've only done that once before. And this is a guy who is like, I don't know, 25-time world champion. It was amazing. So what? what's your best group? Handgun, rifle, uh, bow? You ever shot a Robin Hood? Oh, yeah. 866-TALK-GUN or just dial Tom Talk Gun. Responsible owners control access to their firearms, even when they may need them in a hurry. Liberty Safe, the nation's leader in gun safes, offers six models of handgun vaults. Strong, simple to use, open with a key or fingerprint. Put your handgun in the compact vault, lock it away until you need it. Then it's in your hand almost instantly. Pick the Liberty Safe handgun vault that's right for you. LibertySafeHD.com. The Ruger pistol that started it all is now even better. The Ruger Mark IV has the same great look as the Mark III, but now its simple one-button takedown means less time taking apart your gun and more time shooting it. Disassemble it in seconds for no hassle cleaning. Learn more about the Target, Hunter, and 2245 light Mark IV series models at Ruger.com. The Ruger Mark IV, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. There's only one place where you can buy that firearm you've always wanted and turn it into your very own. That place is Brownells.com. Now offering a huge selection of firearms from all your favorite brands. Brownells is the spot to buy online. When you're choosing your gun, be sure to look over the enormous selection of parts, accessories, ammo, and more to make that firearm your masterpiece. Brownells.com. Serious about firearms. Get ready for something totally new from LMT, a short personal defense weapon with an integral suppressor. Featuring new suppressor technology from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the CSW, or confined space weapon, has a 24-inch overall length profile and includes their new high-performance suppressor that can shoot supersonic and subsonic ammunition with no changes. Chambered for the 300 blackout, the CSW allows quick movement in tight quarters. For more, visit LMTDefense.com. All right, 866 Talk Gun gets you in here. I'm Tom Gresham. Uh, let's see this report coming out of you know in California. They've had all these wildfires out there. My friend Jeff Pittman has a newsletter, which is very cool. It puts it out uh, once a week. This report says uh, from somebody out there says the fire here in Ventura erupted suddenly, like an earthquake. There's a point to this. There was scant warning. On extremely short notice, we were forced to evacuate from our home late Monday. As we departed, we could see a literal wall of fire from our driveway. Huge flames advancing relentlessly like charging infantry. As we drove away, I was astonished to see clueless people parked on the side of the road, just watching motionlessly mesmerized, indeed paralyzed by the sight of advancing fire, as though it was some sort of 
entertainment. A simultaneous power failure meant no traffic lights, no street lights, no ambient light except for the fire itself. Uh, and maybe even uh, JP uh, adds in here, no cell phone towers, no phone lines. He says, as I write this, the fire continues to rage. Citywide emergency curfew is being ignored. The emergency curfew is being ignored by looters and other criminals. Do you have a go bag? If I came to your house and banged on the door and says, you have two minutes to leave, what would you grab? Do you have something ready? It happens. It happens. It really does happen. Line three, Leonard, Minden, Nevada. Leonard, what did you get? Hi, sir. I really want to tell you that I appreciate your show. I, uh, I've i been listening for a while now, but I guess I just really started to listen because I just bought me my first gun belt. Oh, you, you've had the epiphany, haven't you? Yes, yeah, sir. Most of the time I've been wearing a shoulder holster. But I uh, couldn't find a belt, I guess, and I just wasn't listening to you, and I need to pay attention more. <laughs> okay, so, so all right, you get a really good, absolutely made, it's a gun belt, not a belt that you can put a gun a holster on. This is a belt that's made to hold a gun. So what did it change about carrying once you have a good gun belt? Well, the gun's no longer down around my knees. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that that okay. was the biggest problem. Okay. Uh, well, shoulder bolt. Here, here, here in Nevada, we have uh, open carry, and I've been a permit holder for a while, but we mm-hmm. have open carry, and uh, I would wear a shoulder holster or uh, and then put a coat over it or a jacket, you know. Mm-hmm. And cause I've had the the CCW for a long time, but um, I did my research on the internet and found Tucker gun belt and mm-hmm. i love tucker let me tell you you know it, isn't it more comfortable don't you just find it comfortable to have a good gun belt and now you're you know it just holds everything in place it does it does you know i i, I like a western belt buckle and mm-hmm. that's one of the things that i was looking for so you know i found it talked with uh, the owner bob and uh, he you know, he said, you know, that they've got the adapters and the screws that you can put in on the leather there to to, to interchange your bell buckle. So mm-hmm. I don't have the, the standard one. But, yeah, uh-huh. that works for me. All right. Let me ask you. I'm going to put you on the spot. How much did you have to pay to get a good gun belt? I paid a little over $100. I know. And there are people 100. who are going to be saying, oh, I would never pay that. I'd get a good gun belt for $10 at Costco or, or Walmart. And you go, no, actually, you can't. Not for gun, Not for carry. Now, here's the other part is that belt will last you somewhere between five and ten years. Well, then that's going to last me the rest of my life, I guess, you know. <laughs> but that this belt is so strong, I think I could tow a, a, a three-quarter ton truck out with it, you know. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a good deal, you know. Oh, and, I am uh, delighted. You know, I, I mean, I'm glad that you finally started listening. I've been preaching this for years, and I, and I get this all the time. People say, I can't believe I didn't pay attention to you early. I got a, a really good gun belt, and, man, that really makes a difference. You know, I, I carry uh, in, in, in the summertime or in the warmer weathers, you know, I carry the, the, the XD, and I carry a couple of them depending on the situation. I, I, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's a XD Mod 2. Mm-hmm. Nine millimeter, and the other one is the uh, XDS in forty five. Right. But in the winter time, I carry my Brown, Browning high power nine okay. millimeter, right. and then I carry a. I like the Springfield Armory A one forty five ATP. You, you've got some so pretty good guns there. I mean, and you know the thing is, and I think I, I apologize. I got around to the break here, but yeah, you get uh, good holsters. You put them on a good belt. Uh, especially if you're carrying big guns, especially if you're carrying two guns. And let me just say, for those who are wondering, scratching their heads, a lot of the professionals I know always carry two guns. Uh, not unusual at all. Um, I could make an argument for make, uh, carrying the same two guns rather than carrying two different kind of guns, but that's uh, neither here nor there. I don't know. if do you carry? Have you ever carried two guns? Were you able to? Did it make you feel weird carrying two was it too much to carry for your belt rig or did you kind of like having that instant backup where you don't have to do a quick reload 866 talk gun
All right, get an email from my friend Frank. He says, hey, Tom, great show today. He says, I'm going to buy myself uh, for Christmas a 1911 and 9 millimeter just for fun. He says, I would have called the show today, but uh, had surgery on his throat. Hope you get to feeling better. What, the way to go there, Frank. Let's see here. I want to, uh, let's drop down to line one. I want to get Joe in here from Watertown, South Dakota. Joe, welcome to Gun Talk. Thank you very much. Uh, my take on the uh, open carry is, uh, yes, I believe one should be able to carry anywhere on God's green earth uh, open. But uh, I don't, I do not choose to open carry. Uh, my motto is uh, I kind of like to go through life. I think most people should, uh, you know, go through life without drawing attention to yourself. And uh, Mm -hmm. obviously open carry does to some people. Unfortunately, it's the uninformed and uh, the ones that get hysterical about seeing someone carrying open, uh, whether it's in the supermarket, regardless of where Mm -hmm. they're at. Uh, But, uh, yeah, open carry, fine, but but I choose not to. That's kind of where I am. I'm I'm fine with it, just just not for me. So I think you had also a question about what do you do in a traffic stop, right? Yes. uh, Yes. I have any and all papers, uh, you know, my proof of insurance, my registration, my driver's license. I have that secured somewhere here where I can easily access it. I, in some vehicles, I, I've rigged up to where I, I have it in a, a little holder that I got Velcro on it, and I got it stuck right to my dash so I mm-hmm. don't have to be reached. Pocket to pull out my wallet to get my driver's license, have it there. That's a benefit to law enforcement. That uh, you know, then mm-hmm. you're everything's always exposed that way. It's a good plan. I mean, and people ask me, say, "What do I do if I'm stopped?" You know, here's here's the way I treat it. Uh, in the daytime, I'm just rolling down all my windows, uh, front windows and back windows, before the officer gets to the car. I want him or her to be able to see in the car, so there's no threats in there. I'm going to keep my hands on the steering wheel. Uh, probably going to have a smile on my face. Because, look, you know, what's the worst that can happen? I get uh, a ticket. You know, I can live with that. Uh, in my state, I'm required to, but even if I'm not, I'm probably just going to say, you know, I uh, just want to let you know uh, I do have a carry permit. It's, not, it's best not to start off with an officer saying, hey, I got a gun. <laughs> His Masada Yub says, yeah, that's when I say, yeah, I, I do too. I have one. <laughs> um, and just say, look, I have a permit, How, you know, and today I'm carrying uh, and usually they'll say, yeah, okay, thanks. Appreciate that. Sometimes they may say, well, where, you, where do you have it today? And I'll say, it's on, on a belt. And sometimes they'll say, okay, just leave it there. Don't worry about it. We'll just, you know, let me check your license. Occasionally somebody might say, well, I need you to step out. I'm going to, you know, take your gun while we're doing this, and I'll get it back to you at the end. Okay. The main thing here, it's not dangerous unless somebody gets spooked or surprised. And then at that point, it's dangerous for you. So it's best just to have a smile on your face. Yes, officer, here's what's going on. At night, I stop, I turn on the interior lights, roll down all the windows so the officer can see inside the car, no threats again, and just do the same thing. And if I have my driver's license and my light permit in my hand, uh, when he gets there, that's great. But I'm not going to go digging around. I'm certainly not going to go digging around in a uh, glove compartment until I say, look, you know, there's, uh, I need registrations in the glove compartment. Are you okay with me getting it out of there? You know, I'm, I mean, basically talk through every step of the way. Don't assume and certainly don't cop an attitude. He or she's just doing a job. You know, they, they want to do the job and go home at the end of the day. You just want to get through this thing and get out of it. It's not pleasant, but it's also not earth-shaking, and it's not going to ruin you financially. If you were speeding, so be it. If there's something else going on, just work with it. And I'll tell you the other thing. I think I've known a lot of people who've gotten out of tickets when they were carrying. The officer says, hey, good job. Hey, look, I'm glad you carry them. Just carry on and uh, be safe out there. So there you go. Hey, when we come back, I want to talk about the thing that's going on in California, a lawsuit because they're banning assault weapons again. But we got a lawsuit that may be putting that to uh, rest or at least shoving it back a little bit. This is important stuff. 866-TALK-GUN is the number. 